Even if you've never invested a penny, you've probably heard of the Dow and the S&P 500. So what are they? They're stock market indexes, which means they track the performance of groups of stocks and the result is a broad measure of the overall gains or losses in the market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, or the Dow, tracks the stock performance of 30 large US-based companies and it gives most weight to stocks with the highest share prices. The Standard & Poor's 500 Index, better known as the S&P 500, also tracks large US-based companies, but it provides a much broader measure of the market because it includes 500 companies. The S&P also calculates average performance differently than the Dow does. It gives greater weight to companies with larger market caps, not higher share prices. The NASDAQ Composite Index groups together many of the stocks that trade on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, largely shares of tech companies. A lot of investors use the NASDAQ to gauge the overall performance of technology stocks like Tesla, Apple, and Facebook. Understanding the differences between indexes can help you get a snapshot of different parts of the stock market. For example, the Dow can show how the largest companies in the U.S. economy, like Walmart and Apple, are doing at a given moment. Other indexes can shed light on different markets. For example, the Bloomberg Barclays U.S. Aggregate Bond Index measures the performance of the broad U.S. bond market. The MSCI Global Index includes thousands of companies across 23 different countries, offering a more global market perspective. And if you're interested in tracking every public U.S. company, there's the Wilshire 5000, also known as the Total Market Index. Indexes serve as useful guides for following market trends. That's one reason financial news outlets often include the movements of the S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrial Average. Every index is divided into points. Now here's the interesting part. As indexes rise in value, each point is smaller on a percentage basis. For example, on Black Monday, the Dow fell 22.6%, or 508 points. With the Dow around 35,000 today, a 22.6% decline would be 7,910 points. Indexes can also be useful for measuring how well a stock or mutual fund is performing compared with similar investments. For example, if you invest in an actively managed small cap mutual fund, you might want to see it outperform the Russell 2000 index of small cap stocks. Side note, if you don't know what an actively managed fund is, don't worry, we'll explain that in a later episode. Indexes also form the basis of index funds, which aim to mirror the performance of specific parts of the market. The first index fund was launched by Vanguard in 1976, and the company was an early champion of the low-cost funds. For many long-term investors, owning index funds has been a winning strategy for decades. Today, lots of companies offer index funds, and since 1993, investors have also been able to invest in ETFs, exchange-traded funds that track indexes like the S&P 500. We'll dive into ETFs, mutual funds, and index funds in episode 5. For now, what you need to remember is that ultimately, indexes help you understand the markets and your investments.